The very notion of travel photography obviously implies that the location is at least somewhat important to the photographs that you're capturing. Lightroom 4 makes it very easy to associate locations with your photos through the use of the map module. You can see, for example, with this image, I've added keywords. Those include Austria, Europe, and Graz. And so I've already gotten a pretty good start in terms of identifying where I captured this photographic image. But I can actually take things much further, specifying a particular location for this image. And in many cases, doing so automatically. I'll switch to the map module, and you'll see that at the moment I don't have any images displayed on the map itself. If I'd used a camera that includes a GPS receiver, such as a smartphone or certain compact cameras, or if I had used an accessory GPS receiver in conjunction with a digital SLR, then my images could have been automatically tagged with location information, and they would appear on the map automatically. Another option, though, is to record a track log while you're capturing images, and that's exactly what I did in this case. You have several options in terms of actually recording a track log. Many GPS navigators, such as one you might use when driving, include the option to record a track log. There are also small specialty devices that are designed for the sole purpose of recording a track log. If you have a smartphone, another great option is to use an application that allows you to record track logs. A smartphone application has the added advantage of being able to determine your location with reasonable accuracy using cellular phone signals and wireless networks. So you can still record a relatively good track log even if you're not able to obtain a good GPS signal, such as when you're indoors. For these images, I recorded a track log using a tiny GPS device that I kept in my backpack while walking around town. I'll go ahead and load that track log so that I can associate a particular location with my images. On the toolbar below the map, I'll click on the Track Log button and then choose the Load Track Log option. I'll navigate to the location where I've saved my track log from my GPS device. In this case, I used a smartphone to record a track. And I've copied that track log into the same folder where my images are stored so that I'll always have easy access to that track log. It's a GPX file, and so I'll go ahead and choose that option and then click the Choose button. You can see that the track log is now displayed as a path on the map, and the map has been zoomed in to the particular location. This happens to be in the city of Graz in Austria. And if I point the mouse at the track log, I can see the times associated with particular points on the track log. However, I can tell just from memory that this is not accurate. I obviously didn't have my GPS device set to the correct time, so I need to apply an offset. So from the track log button, I'll simply choose the set time zone offset option, and then I can move a slider to adjust the time for my track log. Note that when the time appears in red, that indicates that it does not match the photos that I'm currently working with, and when it appears in black, it means that the photos are included in that range. So that can be helpful for getting a sense of what an accurate adjustment would be. In this case, it's a six hour adjustment that I needed. I'll go ahead and click the OK button. The time associated with those positions on the track log will then be updated. Now I can select the range of photos that I captured in this particular location. I'll go ahead and choose the first image that I captured in Graz, and then I'll scroll to the last photo that was captured in Graz and hold the shift key while clicking on that last photo. I'll then go ahead and click the track log button once again, and I'll scroll down to the option to auto tag the selected photos. Note that there's an indication of how many photos are currently selected, so I know how many will be tagged. I'll choose that option, and you can see that the map has been updated with push pins indicating all of the images that have been tagged. Looking at the film strip, you'll notice that there is a push pin associated with most of the images. That indicates that there are GPS coordinates associated with that photo. Note that these graffiti photos, however, do not have GPS coordinates associated with them, and that's because these images were captured at a later time when I was not recording a track log. I'll go ahead and zoom in on the map, and we can check the location of some of our photos to make sure that everything seems accurate. I'll click on a push pin here, for example. You can see that there are two images associated with this push pin, and I can navigate among the two images that are associated with that push pin using the navigation buttons at the left and right of the thumbnails. Looking at the thumbnail, you can see there's a river down below, and sure enough, the push pin shows that the image was captured on a bridge over this river. Taking a look at a pair of images nearby, you'll see that there's a bell tower associated with a church, and the top has green copper on it. 
I'll go ahead and switch to the satellite display instead of roadmap, and we can look on the map and see that, sure enough, zooming in to get a closer look, we do have that church bell tower with the copper top visible in the satellite display, helping us to confirm that that is indeed the correct location for these photographs. These images were placed on the map automatically using a track log, of course, but let's look at how we can add location information to images for which we don't actually have a GPS track log or otherwise have information about the location. I've panned to a different location on the map, and this happens to be where I captured the graffiti images that do not have location information, but I can add location information very easily simply by dragging one of those images, for example, onto the map. If I didn't get the image in quite the right location, I can simply click and drag that push pin in order to position the image properly on the map, and that will update the GPS coordinates for the image. I can also add location information for multiple images at once. I'll go ahead and select the first image in a range, and then shift click on the last image in that range, and then click and drag those images out onto the map as well. In many cases, you may find that the specific location where you captured images is not especially critical. Just having a pretty good sense of location will be fine. But in situations where you do want to know precisely where an image was captured, you can use the ability to fine-tune the position on the map in order to ensure that that information is as accurate as possible. And note, by the way, that because I've enabled reverse geoencoding in Lightroom, you can see the actual location information that was determined based on the map data for my GPS coordinates associated with this image. So I can see that this image, for example, was captured in Graz, in Steiermark, in Austria. And speaking of those actual locations, we can also define saved locations in order to navigate more easily to a set of images. For example, I've created a saved location for Graz in Austria. If I click on the arrow button, we'll be taken to that location. Note that it is centered on Graz, and I've defined a circle. I can adjust the size of that circle if I'd like, in order to define which area I think of as this location, in this case, Graz, Austria. And any images that have GPS coordinates that place them inside that circle will be associated with this saved location. In many cases, you'll find that using a saved location is a little bit easier than simply panning across the map in order to find a particular location. We can also filter images based on the map. I'll go ahead and zoom in to a particular location on the map so that we're filtering out some of the images just by virtue of what's actually visible on the map. So here, for example, only a portion of the images are visible on the current map display. If I filter based on which images are visible on the map, you'll see that in this case, for example, only 13 images are actually visible, and so those are the only ones that are displayed on on the film strip. If I choose the tagged option, then all images with GPS location information will be displayed on the film strip, and if I choose untagged, then those images that are not tagged, those that do not have GPS coordinates, will be highlighted on the map. That's obviously helpful for ensuring that all images have location information. For example, if I scroll over to the left, we'll find some of the images captured in Salzburg that do not have location information associated with them yet. And of course, at any time, I can simply turn off the filtering so that I can see all available images on the film strip. As you can see, it's quite easy to work with the map module in Lightroom. And I find that whenever I'm photographing on a trip, I like to make use of the map module, both for organizing my images, but also simply to browse through the locations I've traveled to. It can be a lot of fun and, of course, very helpful as well.